Five years across Africa and the rest of the world, this is Continental Prime and Suleiman Alede. Now, after several attempts to delay it, former South African President Jacob Zuma will finally have his day in court. According to Pete and Marisburg High Court Judge Pete Cohen, the former statesman's corruption trial will be going ahead in April. Zuma faces a raft of corruption, fraud and money laundering charges related to the country's controversial arms deal in 1999. His trial has been delayed significantly, but in a judgment handed down earlier today, Cohen dismissed the six applications launched by Zuma against the legitimacy of his corruption prosecution. Cohen reiterated that the National Prosecuting Authority had previously argued Zuma did not have the legal right to appeal. The Zuma Foundation has hit back, saying the decision is a travesty of justice. Joining me this evening to uh, unpack this is legal analyst Benedict Fury. Uh, good to see you, Benedict. Uh, just quickly, give us the basics with the latest appeal of the former president. What exactly was his appeal? Well, um, yes, the former president uh, basically appealed a decision by Judge Kuhn uh, last year to the effect that um, he could not remove the prosecutor on the matter on the basis that he had a lack of title to prosecute. Um, his main contention was that uh, the, the lead prosecutor had displayed bias towards him um, and had shown that he could not prosecute this matter with impartiality and for that reason did not have a title to prosecute. So what the judge actually said today is, you know, the law is quite clear that a title to prosecute relates to a very technical um, and limited uh, uh, co um, uh, confirmation around whether the prosecutor has the sufficient um, uh, qualifications or the necessary certificates to prosecute and questions of bias uh, sit in a different legal sphere. They might go to questions of a fair trial, but they do not go to the question of title to prosecute. And he found then that the former president would not have prospects of success uh, to a higher court because of the decisions of the higher court, which are currently binding on not only the higher court, but Judge Kuhn himself. So for that reason, uh, his appeal was then dismissed and the trial will then proceed on the 11th of April this year. Now, Benedict, give us your thoughts on the judgment handed down today. What do you make of it? I think it's a very good judgment. I mean, it was 61 pages, so quite thorough and detailed in its exposition uh, of the law. Uh, the most important parts of that judgment were, you know, for the former president to be successful, he would have had to show that a, a different court will come to a different conclusion and that uh, Judge Kuhn had misconstrued some of the facts or misapplied the law. Uh, it was always clear that Judge Kuhn had actually applied the law in a very meticulous manner. Um, and so the next sort of angle that the former president could latch on to was that there were exceptional circumstances which would merit an appeal. And in this particular instance, uh, the judge Kuhn finding that there aren't any exceptional circumstances, and particularly because criminal trials are not dealt with in a piecemeal fashion, and usually the accused only has an ability to appeal at the end. And the reason for that, obviously, is that uh, criminal trials have to be dealt with speedily. Uh, it's fair to the public and fair to the accused. And so it wouldn't be in the interest of justice in this particular instance if this matter was dealt in a piecemeal fashion like the president wanted. So now, between now and April, when the trial opens, do you think the former president still has space to appeal this decision in any way? He, he does have the opportunity to then petition the Supreme Court of Appeal, and he'll say, well, even though Judge Kuhn didn't give me the right to appeal, uh, you may see this slightly differently, and therefore let me be heard. Um, you, so he could do that, uh, but given the time frames of the Supreme Court of Appeal and how they actually deal with petitions, I don't think that uh, we're in a scenario where we potentially may not start on the 11th of April this year. So even if he may go that route, I think um, you know it's very much a, a very limited option for him and may not yield the result he may want to further postpone this trial. A travesty of justice. That's uh, what the Zuma Foundation is calling this uh, particular trial. 
uh, are they clutching at straws? Absolutely clutching at straws. Um, it's not a travesty of justice. And I think it's very unfair to the president's uh, legal representatives because they always had a tough case um, and they gave it, you know, quite some effort, you know. So it, it's not for lack of arguing and for lack of trying that this outcome has come. They pushed the law to its limit. They really forced us to grapple with some difficult legal concepts. Um, but, you know, the outcome is actually as the law is. So I think it's unfortunate that that term is bandied about not only for the legal system, but also for the former president's uh, own lawyers as well, who really gave it the all here. Benedict Ferry, many thanks for your time. Well, in the meantime, the Jacob Zuma Foundation says the former president's legal team is expected to advise him to approach the Supreme Court of Appeal. This comes after the Peter Marisburg High Court ruled that Zuma's corruption trial should start on April 11. Judge Pete Cohen has dismissed Zuma's application for leave to appeal. Uh, the judge had previously dismissed Zuma's special plea, which led state prosecutor advocate Billy Downer to recuse himself. The foundation spokesperson when Nelly Manyi was speaking outside the court, according to him, they will ask Mr. Zuma to petition it. But the lawyers will shape proper reasoning and grounds for all of that. Now, Zuma and French arms dealer Pills are facing corruption, fraud, money laundering and racketeering in connection with South Africa's 1999 arms deal.